In today's video, whoa, I probably shouted there, calm myself down, I'm getting too excited. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be testing out the blackest paint in the world. And I say the blackest paint in the world, it's actually not the blackest paint in the world, but it's the blackest paint I could get hold of. And it's this one, which is the 2.0 one. There is a 3.0, but you had to back it on Kickstarter and I didn't. But as soon as I can get my hands on the next version of this, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison, just a quick one on the channel, just to see kind of how they compare to one another. But for now, we're going to be testing out the 2.0 version. But before we get into the paint test, make sure to click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss an upload. Right, so this is the website where I get it from. It's called Culture Hustle, and the paint was handmade in England. Yes, we still make things. Surprising, I know. And if I'm right to believe, I think this website and all the kind of products that are on it are made by an artist, so... It's made by an artist. An artist called Stuart Semple. Right, so this is the one here. It's Black 2.0. And it's $11.99, which is a little bit more than I normally spend on my paint. I usually spend about $8.50 on a tube of acrylic paint. So it's a little bit on the pricier side. It's the world's maddest, flattest black art material by Stuart Semple. Yeah, the claim is that it's the most pigmented, flattest, maddest black acrylic paint in the world. Obviously, the 3.0 will be even maddier and flattier and... Black, yeah? It's been developed in close collaboration with thousands of artists from all over the world and the first version of Black, so, oh, so this is the second one. It was created by Stuart Semple in close collaboration with colour chemists, specialists from the cosmetics industry and architectural coating experts. So they take it very seriously. It seems well researched and well tested. And apparently the foundation of the paint is Stuart's super base, oh! which enables this paint to hold more pigment than any other whilst drying to an anti-reflective super flat finish. And the thing is, it makes some very serious claims about how amazing this paint is. So when we test it out, it better be like absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. It's cold to the touch. I don't know why that's an important feature, but it's cold to the touch. That's priced at what it costs to make, which I find hard to believe because otherwise you wouldn't make any money. I don't know. It's shippable worldwide as well. So if you don't live in the UK, then you can get it yourself. And this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. I bought it myself. It'll be a non-biased review. And apparently it's specifically not available to Anish Kapoor. F*** you Anish Kapoor. And if you don't kind of get that reference, it's basically Anish Kapoor trademarked the blackest pigment. So no other artist could get hold of it. He uses very concentrated pigments in his work and he did trademark the blackest black. And I think this came about in retaliation to that. So this is not available to Anish Kapoor. It's pre-mixed just one bottle, so the other one you must have had to mix it together yourself. It can be thinned with water to achieve ink-like flows. We're going to try that today, actually. We're going to try thinning it out with some water. And this is what I'm going to be testing out as well, because obviously they've kind of painted a unicorn sculpture. I'm not going to do a unicorn one, but they've painted it in this black, and you can see from this image that it is incredibly flat, and that's what I want to test out. And it's also got this little graph here, which... I have no idea what it means. <laughs> but I think the best thing for us to do is to grab some paper and the paint and we'll test it out and see if it really is that black. Right, so what I thought would be a fun experiment for us to do would be to test out what their paint is like against kind of my regular acrylic black paint that I use. So I usually use a De La Rowney, Rowney? I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that right, but the System 3 acrylics. And they're pretty decent, I've never had kind of any complaints about them, I quite like them. And then you've got this one, and you can kind of see straight off the bat that the Stuart Semple one is a lot more kind of compact. It's just, it's very simple, it's a very simply designed paint pot. Whereas with the System 3, there's a lot more going on. But I kind of prefer the just compact, simple nature of this one, if I'm honest with you. And you would think you were getting kind of more in the System 3, because it's a larger tube. They're exactly the same, you're getting 150 milliliters in both of of these it's just that this one likes to light you because it looks bigger and it's deceptive and it does say on the bottle not to use on hot surfaces light bulbs or radiators right so let's swatch them first and see how they kind of perform I'll do the um, process black first and I'm gonna do a few tests as well I'm not just gonna swatch them side by side I'm gonna thin both of them out with water I'm going to thicken both of them up with some thickening gel and I'm also gonna paint a white circle two of them here to see how kind of flat it makes each of them 
and I think that'll give us a good indication of how good this paint is and how mattifying and black and blah 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 it is. Apparently, apparently, we don't know yet. Right, so this is the System 3 black. And yeah, it's just a typical acrylic paint. Seems absolutely fine with me. It's very black. I'm just gonna write them down just in case I forget. And then I want to dilute it with water as well. Yeah, and the System 3 one thins out quite nicely with um, a bit of water. It has more of a kind of inky texture when it's thinned out. All right, now I'm going to add some thickening gel to it as well, just to see if that changes anything. Well, obviously it's going to thicken it up. And it's giving it a lot more of a kind of textured, grainy, thick, obviously feel to it, which is something I was expecting. Obviously that's very buildable as well. Right, and for the final test, I'm gonna paint this ball to see what that looks like. And obviously we're gonna to have to wait for all this to dry too. Yeah, and it's done exactly what I thought it was going to do. It's painted black and it looks quite black to me anyway. We'll put it to one side just to let it dry. Right now it's for the blackest black and we'll see how this kind of performs side by side. So we'll just do a first kind of swatch. I will say it seems very, it's a lot thinner. It doesn't have kind of gel-like consistency like the System 3 one does. Oh, that's smooth. That's really nice and smooth. It just kind of glides across the paper. It's strange, it doesn't feel like a typical acrylic. It feels very, very nice. Very full coverage, thick, creamy, soft. I do like that. It felt very nice to paint with. We'll obviously see what it's like when it's dry. Right now it kind of, it does look a bit darker than that one. And then we'll thin it out with some water as well. Yeah, thin it out with water feels... Feels quite nice. I'm not gonna lie. Feels like deeper. Feels very kind of saturated whereas this one felt runny when i diluted it with water now we'll see what it's like with some thickening gel it didn't say anything online whether you could thicken it or whether you couldn't so it's an acrylic paint you should be able to add a thickening gel to it and i find as well with thickening gels it kind of mattifies the paint anyway so I don't know whether this will do anything to it. Yeah, and that's kind of performed very similar, if not the same, as the System 3. It's got a nice textured surface, it's thicker, and it's got a grainy kind of feel to it. It's kind of exactly what I would expect. All right, we'll paint this ball and see what this is gonna be like. I will say it's very pigmented. It just feels very luxe. Feel, feels very different from a normal kind of acrylic paint. I do feel like it doesn't go as far as the System 3 acrylic though. Maybe it's because this isn't a blip. Maybe it's because this is an ab absorbent surface. It's kind of struggling with it because it is a runny paint. Right, so I've got that covered. And then what we'll do is, once it's dry, we'll test out and see if it's actually flattened the ball and see what it looks like compared to the System 3 acrylics as well. And we'll test out our swatches too, because if it's a matte acrylic paint, you're gonna have to wait for everything to dry because if it's still wet, obviously light's gonna bounce off it. So we wanna wait till it's completely dry so we get this full flat effect that's supposed to apparently happen. Okay, so. I'm back and everything's dry and it's time to review the results. <sighs> right, straight away kind of looking at the swatches of each paint that didn't have kind of any additives. You can see that this one has the normal system through. You can see that there. It's got a reflective shine to it. Whereas this one, the black, no matter kind of what I do, and I have three massive lights in the studio, I've got two softbox and a ring light, I can't seem to get like a shine off it or anything. And I'm not gonna say that it's like perfect or anything like that. I can still see kind of brush strokes and stuff like that. And I can see some lighter elements to it. But in comparison to the System 3, there's literally no competition when it comes to the blackiest black or the mattiest matte. And it definitely does do what it says on the tin. Same with adding water, it worked perfectly well. It kind of reminds me of a chalkboard texture. It's that kind of very matte, chalky black, but a much richer, deeper kind of black color. It's very nice paint, I'm really impressed with it. And adding the thickening gel, I can't actually see much of a difference with either of them. And if I'm honest, I think the black 2.0 actually lightened the black paint, whereas the System 3 one kind of kept it the same color. Like I said, the thickening gel kind of mattifies paint anyway, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. There's a slight difference, but it's not huge. Right, now for the ball test. Right, so this is the System 3 color. And as you can see, it's shiny, it's got reflective surfaces, you can see plenty of kind of the light shining there. It's black, 
and it's coloured well and it's full coverage but it's definitely got a shine to it. In comparison, like look at that, there's no shine, there's nothing. So if I kind of come all the way back here, this one looks like a perfectly flat disc. This one, you can see that there's, it's a 3D object, you can see that there's dimension. And I will say from far away, it has that illusion a lot better. Up close, the illusion gets ruined slightly, but it's, it's honestly, it's pretty crazy. It's really crazy stuff. And it is, it's very black, it's very matte. So it's definitely not kind of false advertising or anything like that. And it has exceeded my expectations. So to summarize, would I recommend this black 2.0 paint by Stuart Semple? I 100% would. I think it's a really, really high quality paint. I think the System 3 paint's pretty fine, but what you'll find is System 3 kind of has more of a plasticky feeling to it. And I think that's why it gives off a shine. Whereas this one, it's almost like, like a pure liquid or something. It's very surreal. And I think if you're an acrylic painter or just a painter in general, where the depth and kind of the definition of the darks and the lights is really important to you, then I would really go for this. This one's usually 850 that I spend on this. This one was 11.89, so 12 quid. So it's about three pound 50 more for this blackest black paint. And I think it's worth every penny, I really do. And I think a little goes a long way. I did struggle with this one because it's a polystyrene ball and it's quite absorbent. So it's kind of sucking in the paint. If you're painting on that kind of texture, you use a lot more. Whereas this kind of paint kind of glides over the surface of it a lot easier. And I do have to stress this isn't a sponsored or an affiliated video or anything like that. It's just a paint I really wanted to test out to see if the claims were true. And apparently they are. And if you want to buy yourself this, go to culturehustle.com and buy yourself one. I don't have a discount code or anything like that because I'm not a typical YouTuber. I don't think about money all the time. Shade. But I think if you're kind of creating more fluid fluid, big, abstract paintings. The System 3 acrylic paint will do you just fine and I've never had any kind of issues with it. And like I said earlier on, when the next version of this paint becomes available, which I think it'll be quite soon after this video actually, I'll grab hold of a bottle and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the 2.0 and the 3.0 because I'm very skeptical to see if there's actually anything to improve on. I don't know how you could get this more matte here or black here than it already is. And let me know down in the comments below if you're familiar with this paint. Have you tried it before? Are you going to try it now? But that does it for today's video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps out a lot. And I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Bye.